Hey Oilers, I'm Heather Miller. And I'm Courtney Kiss. And welcome, welcome to, to Campus, Campus Update. Update. Where's my shadow? Hey Oilers, Trey Nesbitt here with your HB Holla. Okay, so Wednesday, February 2nd was Groundhog's Day and Puxatawney Phil didn't see his shadow, which means A, six more weeks of winter, B, two more weeks until spring, C, one more week of winter, or D, the apocalypse is beginning. Holla, if you think you know the answer. Time's up. The answer is B. Two more weeks until spring. We've been counting on Puxatawney Phil for the last 125 years for our Groundhog's Day prediction. Let's hope for many more accurate years from this little sucker. Finals week took place last week, January 25th to the 28th. Here's what you students have to say about how finals went. Um, I felt that my finals went really well. Uh, there were definitely some harder ones, some easier ones. Uh, my hardest final was probably my English final. I felt pretty good about finals. You know, this year was a lot easier being senior year and all, so I took a little bit easier classes in order to um, have a more relaxed senior year. Um, so but overall, I felt like I did a very good job. I thought my finals were pretty easy. I didn't really have much going on. Hey Courtney, have you been to the OC Fairgrounds recently? No, why? Why don't I just have Rachel Lang tell you about it? Hey Oilers, I'm Rachel Lang here at the OC Fairgrounds where every Thursday from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. different gourmet food trucks flock the Food Truck Fair Thursdays to let the public taste what they have to offer. Let's ask some people their opinions. And how do you like the Food Truck Fair Thursdays? Food Truck Fair is actually a great event. It helps promote both the food trucks and local businesses in Orange County also helps us promote the OC Foodie Fest that's done every year. So what did you eat here today? You know, I tried a, a taco off a cow beef taco right here, spicy pork taco, good stuff. You know, I like it a lot. I like the whole uh, food truck, I guess we'll call it trend in general. So uh, if it was here or somewhere else and it was relatively close to my house, I'd go out to check it out. I really enjoy them. Thanks, Rachel. Looks delicious. You know what else is delicious? Mr. Gardner's White Sea Bass Relocation Project. Here's Alyssa Bailey with the story. Thanks, Courtney. I'm with Mr. Gardner to follow up on the White Sea Bass Relocation Project that we introduced to you a couple weeks ago. Let's see what's changed since the last time we talked. Not this coming week, but the following week, we'll have another shipment of 30 fish in, 30 or 40 fish coming in. The White Sea Bass Relocation Project is the first of its kind. Never before has anyone raised juvenile white sea bass called fingerlings in a controlled environment until they're ready to be released in the wild. But with the help of Hub SeaWorld and Nancy Caruso with Get Inspired, Ape students will make history. Students will be feeding, measuring, and observing the fish, and will regularly perform water quality analysis tests. Once the fish are released in June, Mr. Gardner plans to get in the water himself and track where they go. Mr. Gardner explained that the overall purpose of this project is to give hands-on experience to students and to inspire them to pass their knowledge on to their peers. So it's good, everything's going awesome. We have a lot of, we're starting a white sea bass club here at school. If you're interested and you wanna help, uh, come and join the White Sea Bass Club. Woohoo! Get crazy! All right. Awesome. I also heard that our school competed in a robot competition. So here's what went down in Robot Town. Hi, I'm Mr. Crossit. Uh, what we're doing here is the VEX qualifying rounds for the VEX World Championships. Uh, we've been working with students from AVID, some volunteers. We have people from Mr. Ostrowski's Science Olympiad team here helping out today. This year's goal is to collect rings and put them into different goal posts. There's a low scoring goal post and a high scoring goal post. My name is Steel Mason. We're at the VEX competition here. It's pretty insane. We've been working here, working on robot for a good three to four months, two hours, four hours every week. Hardest obstacle probably would have to be the lifts. We've had problems with our lifts and our robots. It's sort of difficult because there's so many problems with screws fitting it in. Like, got to have certain measurements of everything. You got to get to a certain height limit so you can put the rings on. But overall, we've accomplished it and got through that. My favorite thing to do in this class is probably put together. I just love putting things together with my hands. It's why I've loved Lego since I was really young. And it's coming back to me now, and it's, this is just really fun to, to just, you know, being able to make something and make it run on, on the field. My name's Josh Moralia, and I'm the driver of the robot. I control it, I get all the points, and basically my teammates help me spot where to go. My name's uh, Rahul Hazra. I'm 17, I go to the school. 
I had to program the whole robot from controls, like to go up, down, like turn right, turn left, all that stuff. Uh, I think today's competition is great. I mean, if you look around here, people are having fun, they're learning math and science, applying it. I mean, it's just a win-win. Awesome robots, Mr. Crossit. RFP hosted a car show to promote the Dodge Challenger. Here's the scoop. Friday, January 21st, ROP's coordinator, Hope Mares, put on a car show featuring the Dodge Challenger to promote the Edit Design program. The most unique feature in regard to the engine of the Dodge Challenger is its hemispherical shape, which increases the horsepower. Most engines are square or pyramid shaped, but the Hemi engine is the shape of a half of a hemisphere. The show was an overall success. Hi, I'm Jenna Thormasgard here with Campus Update, where today at local restaurant Tommy Pastrami, people from the Tri-County area are eating the world's biggest pastrami sandwich. Tommy Pastrami on Beach and Talbert held the first annual Pastrami Wars. Contestants competed to eat a three and a half pound sandwich in as little as time as possible. Today's pastrami eating champion, Johnny Excel, finished his sandwich in a record time of 10 minutes and one second and received a $500 check for accomplishing this feat. Overall, today was a great turnout and everyone is excited for next year's competition. Here's Jessica with the Game of the Week. Game of the Week. Hi, I'm here with sophomore Jason Orozco. What were the moves that you had to do on him? It seemed like he almost took you down a couple times. What was, what was going through your mind in those moments? I was thinking like when he had me in the single leg, I was trying to trip him so I can get a takedown. And like when he almost escaped, uh, like I tried to suck him back so I can pin him. It looked like he almost had you pinned at one point. What did you do to get out of that situation? Uh, I just tried to grab his hand, try to move it, remove it, and um, get on my stomach and get out of the thing. Okay. Congratulations, Eli, on your win. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Jessica. So Mr. Gorin's environmental class has been working hard on a garden for quite some time now over by the baseball fields off Yorktown, and it has gotten some recognition from Lowe's. The Lowe's Toolbox for Education gave a $5,000 grant to the school to help build an organic garden. Congratulations to Mr. Gorin's environmental class, and another congratulations to our student in the spotlight. He's a sophomore on the varsity basketball team who's getting a lot of attention. Here's our student in the spotlight. I'm Rochelle Cadillo with your student spotlight, Andrew Tenbrick, a sophomore whose dedication has landed him a spot on boys varsity basketball team. It feels really good to be an underclassman on varsity. It's a lot of fun playing with the older guys. They really know what they're doing. They all love the game and it's, it's a good experience. I first started playing basketball when I, in about third or fourth grade. The people that inspired me the most to play basketball is has to be my cousins. Uh, in my spare time, if I'm not playing sports, either basketball or volleyball, I'm hanging out with my friends. I hope I play basketball after high school and it'd be nice to get a scholarship to a nice D1 school. Honestly, I'd love to be a part of any NBA team in the future, but my favorites are probably either the Celtics or the Suns. I'm Michelle Cadillo and this is your student in the spotlight. Back to you. APA's next main stage show is just around the corner. Here's Wes Theobald with what MMAT has us to rock out to next. We do a Beatles show every year traditionally because um, I think the Beatles are kind of like the bedrock. They're the core of, uh, of kind of all the popular music that comes since them. It doesn't matter who you are, we've all grown up with the Beatles and every single one of us have heard these songs. So it's just another exciting way to hear these songs and me, myself, I'm just excited to play them too. We've been rehearsing for almost two months so it's been a very long process, but it'll definitely come out. This specific show, Beatles Go the Movies, is going to be really cool because the whole point of it is, you know, it's songs that were played in different Beatles movies, and the whole entire the whole entire show we're going to be having uh, clips from every single movie be running while the song is playing. So it's going to be really active, almost like you're reliving the movie experience, which would be really cool. And um, this for this show, we actually get to break out all of our new equipment that Mr. Knight and Mr. Simmons have been working really hard to save up for. We do an annual Beatles show because we stress songwriting in our program and the Beatles were the start of the modern songwriting movement. It's going to be an incredible night of music, the students are amazing, the media team is great, and we're going to have a blast. Hey Heather, I forgot to tell you how great you did in Fusion. You rocked it. Thank you. APA danced at their first main stage show Fusion two weeks ago. The dancers Tech crew and choreographers had been working hard since the beginning of the year to put on an awesome show. The show consisted of everything from ballet, tap, modern, and hip-hop. It was a great show. 
That's all for today. I'm Courtney Kist. And I'm Heather Miller. Stay classy, Oilers. And thanks for watching. Thank you.